There was another gloomy sign for the global economy this week, with the key index of shipping costs hitting an all-time low. The Baltic Dry Index is seen by some as a barometer of international trade, as it reflects demand for bulk commodities like iron ore and coal. But the plunge in shipping rates is putting freight forwarders in a world of pain. And industry insiders say charges have fallen so far, it's cheaper these days to put your home contents in a cargo container than into a storage shed. Neil Woolrich reports. All at sea as the shipping industry gets stuck in the doldrums. Well, the global economy is not that great. The China imports has reduced, so I think, about 4% in the last uh, couple of quarters, which is quite dramatic in the global scheme of things. There's not much grain, steel, uh, coal being moved around at the moment. And that gloomy outlook is reflected in the key gauge of shipping costs, the Baltic Dry Index, which measures the price of shipping bulk commodities like iron ore, coal and grains. At the height of the resources boom in 2008, the Baltic Dry peaked at nearly 12,000 points. But after that, it nosedived and this week fell to a record low of just over 500 points, another sign of the slowdown in global commerce. Global trade is certainly weak for a combination of reasons. One of them is, of course, that China's growth is slowing down and so that's seen weaker demand for commodities. But also we've seen Western demand has been very weak because the business investment cycle has not picked up in the Western economies. And that weakness in the world economy is also hurting Western governments as they set about trying to repair their budgets. The expectations for world growth and world trade have been revised down again. The weakness of the Eurozone remains a persistent problem. There are rising concerns about debt in emerging economies. Freight forwarder Richard Dexter argues there's been little upside for local consumers because the plunge in shipping costs has been offset by the Australian dollar's fall, which is pushing up the price of imports. But he says many in the shipping industry are hurting. Well, freight forwarders typically would charge, say, for example, $50 US profit on a container and 100 on a 40-foot container. But when you've got rates down as low as $200 out of China, that's very hard to justify a $50 profit margin. So they're getting squeezed. And now shipping costs have fallen so low it would cost less to send a homeowner's contents around the world than it would to hold them in a storage shed. You can get a container from Melbourne up to Hong Kong for about $50. So uh, it's <laughs> you bring it back for a round trip for 500 that's cheaper than a month's storage and uh, a storage shed. The cost of shipping has also been helped by the fall in oil prices, which are more than 70% down from their peak. And the slowdown in China's commodity demand has coincided with an increase in the supply of vessels, which some argue makes the Baltic dry a less reliable barometer of global activity. Paul Bloxham says while China's economy is still fairly sluggish, the composition of growth is shifting, which is also creating less demand for shipping. There's still growth in China, it's just coming in a different form and of course that growth, is more, if it's more driven by the services sector, is less traded. So a key reason why the trade cycle has been on the weak side has been partly to do with China's own shift in terms of the, the things that are driving its growth. Order. This week the Senate voted down a bill that would open up Australian shipping to more foreign vessels, many of which pay workers as little as $2 an hour. While the local industry breathed a sigh of relief that another competitive threat has been avoided, the tough times are set to stay. Melbourne port in, imports went up a little bit uh, last year, uh, mainly because of very low shipping rates and, uh, and they took advantage of the, the high dollar while it was there. But I think we're going to see a bit of a decrease uh, coming up in the near future. And that may mean consolidation between existing players or leaving others high and dry.